So we are on the STM32 USB library. So this is usually some software that we give you for free. It's a full stack that is functional for sure. There is bug, as in any software, <laughs> not obvious for sure. But yes, it's something that you can use as it is, and it works pretty well. So, okay, sorry, my pointer doesn't work. Okay, sorry. Ah, okay, got it. Yes, so it's integrated with CubeMX. As we've seen before, we just go in CubeMX, configure sync, generate the code, and the stack is over there. So it's really easy for you to integrate it in your project if you started with CubeMX. Supported config configuration, host or device, for sure. But when you are host, we don't support the hubs. As I only answered this morning, I already correct the guys about this topic. And about the OTG, I always uh, already run you about the fact that it's hardware supported, but it's not supported by our stack today. So now the dev device library organization. If you want, you can have a look also at the same time in your Atolic project. You will find those files, but we will switch from Atolic on the slides. That way you can find the files. <coughs> at the lower level, here we've got the UI USB IP. So the hardware, the registers. To access them, we will use, ah, sorry about this. It was the STM32HXXLL underscore USB dot C. <coughs> this file is really to access the registers. This file is really the lower level that um, you've got in the stack. You can directly use it if you want. If you want to reprogram all your stack by yourself, you can do it, but it's a huge works and very complicated for sure. Then we've got some HL PC, PCD.C who will handle the URQ that's coming and are using this low level. So we will receive some information from the top and will also use the register to configure and to push things. But you will handle all the URQ and we will see that it's very important Mainly, everything's coming from ERQ from the, from, the, from the bottom, okay? Then we've got a file which name is usbd underscore conf dot c. If you look in Hatolic, you will find it in your source folder. That means it's something that you are about to modify or to adapt or things like that. But it's, I would say, be between the really low layers and the device drivers. It's a layer to adapt the interface regarding what kind of device you've got to ensure to have the communication with this. There is really two level of, if you are looking in your Atolic project, you will see this at the same level of the application, but it's not in the organization at the same level. It's really an interface from device drivers to the lower one. But sometimes you will handle and modify something there. Then regarding the device drivers, so here we are in the folder middleware, if I don't tell something stupid, and we'll check after. Here we've got some core files. So we've got the USBD core files.c. So here we'll just handle, I will say, all the setup requests and things like that. And we'll rule the request to the control request, IO request, or to the class, if it's a request for the class. Then in the class, you can communicate with the application thank the cdc underscore ef, ef for interface. So it's the one we already modified together when we want to send something on the VCP or to receive something. It's really the lower, the, lower, the upper part of the stack. <coughs> In this application, we also have the USB device.c, where I will say concentrate all the information of our device. Where is the interfaces? You make the link between the different software components. We will see that it handles the huge structures, and you will be afraid by the next slide for sure, because it was just a huge structures on pointer, on pointer, on elements, on things like that. And then we've got a USBD underscore descriptor.c. I think the name is there. It's for descriptors. But think about descriptors. Descriptors, think some configuration, some on points. Configuration on on point is more linked to the class. So if you've got a part of the descriptor there, 
you will also have, I will say, the lower part of the descriptors. Remember, we've got the device descriptors and you've got configuration register on endpoint. What is endpoint and such kind of thing will be defined in the class because it's in the class that you will define my endpoint is a bulk one, uh, this one is for command, this one is for interrupt and such kind of thing. Okay? So here you just have an overview of the file organization. That's just to afraid you, for those who managed to read it at this distance, because it was just the structures that are being dealt in the code. You've got here all, I will say, the device descriptors, who point in some descriptor, div uh, dis descriptor structures, who point here on the class type descriptors. It's just some link. What I propose is just to check in Atolic what we've got. So I come back here. Okay. So now you should find out what I said to you. Here we've got all the files that are the source. We've got this interface one, the usbdconf.c. If you well remember, it's a link between the middleware and the lower parts. Okay. Here we've got the interfaces, we already modified together, and the USB descriptors. So if we go in it, you will find some function to access to the descriptor and also the descriptors. So what are the class, what are the P0 size and such kind of things. So many information about the device descriptors. But you don't find the description of the on point and, and things like that because it will be down inside the class file. Then we go now in the device library. Here we've got the core one, which is generic, and we've got the class one. So this one is really specific. Here, at the beginning, you've got the configuration so for high speed, but we should have the same for the full speed. Uh, yeah. The full speed descriptors. Here you will find many information, and one of those information who could be interesting it's what are the on point defined for the VCP? Because this morning we discussed in VCP, but do you have any idea of what kind of discussion? Is it a bulk? Is it a chronus? Is it. What do you think? You have an idea about this? In fact, we will have three on points. Well, we, we will have some one which is not, can be, uh, I will say, uh, imagine. It was a common endpoint, which is a type of interrupt. This one is just, I will say, to do some configuration of the communication. But we've got two on points, uh, on point out and on point in, and those ones are in bulk tip. So what we observed, what we used this morning, it was a, um, a configuration with three endpoints. So I don't talk about endpoint zero, who is always here, but we have got one for the in, one for the out, and they are bulk. So our E, or this letter we sent this morning, go through this bulk, and it come back with another bulk. Okay, we don't use this command line, uh, the command endpoint was not used this morning, frankly speaking, but it could be. This is a standard one. This is as it is defined in the USB org. Okay? So, this is really to give you some points where are the information. Now, what I will do, I will just put a breakpoint inside the code. Or maybe I will just... Okay, let's see what, how we launch everything in the device. Because we generated the code, we launch it, but we ha don't have a look in it. So if you are in the main, you can see we've got some HL in it, so generic initialization for the main. We've got some system clock config. Here is done all the clock configuration we have done together. You remember, we put the 8 megahertz or some things coming from another part. We set all the, the coefficient uh, in the PLL to get the good clocking for the USB and also for our system. This is handled by this function. I won't go into details, but it's not interest. GPIO init, 
okay, I think you know what is the GPIO, we just configure the one we, we seen together. And for example, when we added the software output for the traces, it just added one configuration for GGPIO with a proper alternate function. And then we just call a USB device in it and we do nothing. After everything is ready, I will say. What's happened, it will initialize all the structures, enable all the interrupt, and it's only on interrupt that there is some treatment that will be done inside the code. So let's go what is the init. So quite simple. You just do a init first. So here you can see we've got a st huge structure with all the information and we do the link with the descriptor. So here we started to put some pointer inside another structures, okay? I can go inside, but it's quite complicated. You will see a huge link, but I will sum up this in my slide later, okay? Just think here we do the link with the descriptors and a huge structures. Then we will register the class. That means in the structures, we memorize that we've got a USB CDC class that is available in our configuration. So now we point on the function to access, not to access, but to accept some uh, CDC uh, connection. Then we have to register the interfaces. Interfaces define the function that should be available um, as interfaces in your application. So we have to link all those things together. It's really what is done by those different functions. If you go in it, you will just see mainly the copy pointers and pointers on different functions. And after the stack can find all the information together. Then we start. Started, it just put everything in place and enable the interrupt at the lower level. I really sum up the things because I just want to fix you, Heidi, about what is done. I will go further maybe in the code after. Okay, I will come back on the slide. So here is the internal structures and pointer and pointer, but let's forget it, it's too complicating, I think. The init I just told you about, okay, it just show that it take the descriptors and just put this pointer inside this huge structure, okay? You can't read it, just believe me, it's just a copy of some pointers. So it just create a connection. Here, when we register the class, we do the same thing. We just register this function available to this. Then we register the interfaces. So it's allow you to see, I would say, uh, to call from this side or for the upper side, the different function that are here. It's the one we use this morning, receive FS. We've got the control, the init, and the day init. Then we start the USB uh, device library. So, when we start it, there is some LL in it. So, if you remember the LL for the low layers, so here is the initialization of the first structures, and we go up deeper and deeper. This function is in the USB conf.c. And here you can see the different parameters that has been set. It's created by Cubamix for sure. It's regarding which speed you are using, the number of, un of endpoints. It's not the number of endpoints used, but the maximum endpoints that could be used, frankly speaking. Because you can look here, there are six endpoints declared, but we have seen together we only use three. Four with U0. And then you've got the speed in the structures. If a DMA, internal DMA is used, uh, this is only available on high speed. You can use an internal DMA, but not here. The EP0 max packet size. Then we can enable the, soft, the start of frame interrupt generation. So we already deal with this this morning. Remember in the configuration, I could enable it on CubeMX and that allow you to generate a signal at the same uh, with the frequency as the set of frame, which is one millisecond for the low speed, high speed, full speed, sorry, on the high speed, 0 dot, uh, one, no, 125 microseconds, sorry. And that's it for the device parameters. Uh, FIFO location. 
Okay, so then about some FIFO. In our USB device, there is some FIFO that could be used. There is one common FIFO for all the RX, and there is one FIFO per takes on point. Okay? The usage of a FIFO, it allows you to push as, as much as possible data you want to send and prevent you to have a lot of interrupt each time you need to see something. So you can push the things, and when it's ready, it will be sent for the takes, and for the RX, it could take and let you more time to do other things with your MCU. So the dimensioning of those FIFO is really interesting, or I would say it's a really fine tuning, and that could change the performance of all your system because it's depending on this size that you've got more interrupt or less. There is some constraint on them. Uh, I think we will under this in another part. The size, the total size is uh, 4K, 4K, 4K bit if you are in uh, high speed, and if you are in low speed, high speed, it's 1.25 kilobits for the whole. So you can tune it there. So we can see that for the Eryx, we just say, the number of 32 bits world. Take care about this, it's a trick for sure. It's not the size, but it was an argument on 32 bits. And after you've got the takes far for size on the difference. There is no check. That means if you do a mistake there, if you oversizing them, if you go upper than this part, it will compile, but you will get in trouble for sure. We of I don't say often, but I've seen many requests on with this issue. People try to tune them, but they don't use them properly. Forget it was an argument in Word and face an issue after. So for the first one, the Eric, there is no on point in the argument because it's a common one for all the on point. And for the takes five four, you have to give the argument of the on point. So now we will try to transmit a full speed. It will be the part that is a little bit long because I will go in each function. But it's something you can go experiment by yourself by step by step in your code. If you try to do it with the code we generated together, it's not very funny because there is an optimization on the code generation. So when you do some step, jump to other part. But you can deactivate it and, and go there. So what happens when I want to transmit something in the bulk? So first, I just call the CDC transmit full speed. It will just, I will say, set in a, in a structure the length or the store, the buffer sources, and the size. It will just give those points. And then it will, it will, this structure will be um, allocated on the heap. So you remember when you started the end zone, we modify the heap size. This is due mainly to this allocation could be huge. So depending on the class that you are using, you have to adapt the heap of your project. This is also a common trick. So really think about your heap side when you define your project. You can always change it if it's not fit, but it's something regarding the class you are using, you need to have a bigger heap or, another, or a smaller one. So now we will try to do the transmit packets. So at this level, it will just change the state to the buffers to say, OK, we just copy, I will say, the address of the buffer, so now we can't modify it anymore. That means we can't use it in the upper size. Now it's ready to be sent, or I will say it will be sent, so don't modify it anymore. And we call a lower level part, we just say, OK, transmit this. This one will call the HL PCD transmit. And at the end, it will call, uh, I will say, a LL function. So USB EP start X transfer. <laughs> that could be, I will say, a little bit, uh, the name is a little bit strange, but like this. So the function here put all the uh, endpoint registers. How much packet will be sent? What is the size? How, we, how many packets? Then we just enable the file for empty. That means you want to send something. But what you need to know is if, if there is something under send, you have to wait. So it's just waiting that the FIFO is empty. And as soon as it will receive this interrupt, it will push then the data in the FIFO. So here, we just enable the FIFO. We still have the data, I will say, in our level. 
and now the endpoint is enabled. That means we are ready to transmit data. And you remember what will trigger uh, transmit data? We are in bulk. It's host centric. We should receive a token which is in. As soon as we will receive a token in from the host, now we should provide some data. Okay? So here yeah, we imagine, okay, the FIFO is empty, there is nothing here. Then we will really write inside the FIFO. Once you have done that, that means your data is ready to be sent. As soon as we receive the token, the data will leave. It's okay for you? So here we, uh, we say we are nearly the most le lower level. So as I said, okay, now when we have a hint, we've got the data. You remember that I've said that what happens if we don't receive a hack? We will need to send again our data. That means the data is still in the FIFO. Okay? It will be, I will say, removed from the FIFO as soon as we receive a hack. This means, okay, we don't receive it. So when everything is transferred, again, we will have, I will say, some uh, EAQ. So for the takes complete, because when you send something, you are happy to know if it was sent or not, if there is a problem or such kind of thing. So again, it's an EAQ that's coming from the layer level. And then the information will cross the different stage to come back until the uh, application. So PCD data installed code page, and then low level, so it's come just here. Again, they just show you that it's coming to the device, sending the pointer on the structures on the data in. Then it was in the CDC data in static one, so in your case. And we just set the takes data is sent to zero to allow a next transmit. That's the way we are aware that the transmission is okay, is as soon as the take state was set to zero, that means we finish to transmit things. I think if I will remember in the next hands-on we will do with, um, with um, Lubosch, sorry, we will handle this flag, just to ensure that the transmission has been finished and we will do something with this. So, okay, this is a bulk transmit. Now in bulk RX. Some question about this part? I know it sh should not be clear for you. Uh, it's really to give you a clue. Okay. Think about just the structure of the file. Low layer, HIL, conf, come back to the middlewares with the device and come back to the interface if needed. Okay. If you got always this in mind, it's better. After, put a breakpoint in your code and you will see this stack quite easily. Okay. So now we are on the bulk RX. We have transmit a, a, a character, but we want to receive some of them. So here we need to be ready, I would say, because when we receive a out, a data could come just after. So the endpoint needs to be activated. And okay, so our library enables the endpoint after enumeration. That means we are ready to receive. But after a successful received, we need to re-enable again the endpoints. That means each time when you receive something, if you want to be ready to, rec to receive something again, you have to re-enable your on point again. When I say you have to, this is done by the stack. Okay? It's not something you have to handle, but you, it's just to make you understand how it's working at the lower level. So here, to be ready to receive, you, we have to provide, I will say, some Eric's buffer to say, okay, if you receive something, push it in this buffer. So we prepare with a set RX buffer, so nearly symmetric with the transmission, which call the CDC receive packet, so in the device class. Who will say we go through the conf to go the low level? And then again, we prepare to receive, and again we find the up start transfer. It's the same function than for the RX, for the take, sorry. And then everything will be under strength the PCG ARQ under. So if I just, I will say sum up the mechanism. 
Think, think about everything should be ready at the low level to receive or to transmit, and everything will be handled by ERQ regarding all the, the endpoints. That means you will receive a, um, an ERQ, you have checked what is the endpoint concern, okay, it's an endpoint out, it's something, I have something to do, here yes, there is something to transmit, I push it inside the FIFO, uh, I have something to read, okay, I read it from the FIFO and go upstairs. I just give you, uh, we'll say, a huge draw of this stack just to understand how it will be handled. So mainly it's many ERQ from the low level and just push and get back from some FIFO with many intelligence on the top, because this is just to send basic packet, but think about the setup transaction we told this morning, a setup transaction, which is already some transaction that what command I should have to do for get descriptor and such kind of thing. All this intelligence is in the USB device core. This one is really complex. So here are the bulk characters to continue. You've got an ERQ, you need to read the packets, and then you call back the information to go upstairs to say, okay, we receive something. Data out, to out stage, we show the low level, thanks the pointer on the different device, we can go in the class. The CDC receive full speed, so we have seen it this morning in the interfaces, which is defined there. So, as I say, it was the most simplest one here on the control packet handling. Maybe I will go less deeper in this part because it's really what is tricky. <laughs> Just by explaining by, sl by, uh, by slide, it's quite complicated, so I will give you some clue again. But here, okay, not an easy stuff, for sure. So again, we will have an interrupt at the data stage and think that uh, we receive uh, some data and we enable some interrupt on point setup. That means that we are ready to receive a setup stage callback. We will have such kind of thing and we will be in the core, okay? And the core will look what kind of setup is received. Remember, in this first step, the setup stage, we do some setup, but we say something. I want a descriptor. I want to set an address. We've got, I will say, what kind of transfer that will be done in the data stage or directly just set the address. We don't have data to send, but you've got action to do. Okay to with this? So in the setup, it will check what is it for? Is it for a device? Is it for the interface or just for a standard on point? Or should I just stay stall? That means I'm not ready to do anything. This is a different possibility that will be tested by the core. And regarding this, it will do the right correct action just by calling control send data. That means we need to send some data and the send status and we will transmit data if we need to transmit data in the data stage. So you can see that we've got an analyze of this setup stage and we decide if we have something to send or not in the data stage. So sorry, we receive the setup stage <laughs> and we decide regarding what we receive if we need to have a data stage or not. So here the control, um, so it's the end, uh, then we transmit, we receive again an interrupt to say, okay, we receive something, and then we will go back this information, and after we've got the control packet handling, so the output stage, output again, to send, you remember the size of this data here? It was for the, set, the state stage, when everything is okay, zero. We don't send anything, just send an empty packet. That means, okay, everything was okay for the setup. So here is just some details how you can navigate in the code. As I say, we copy many pointer to other pointer places. So when you are looking in the code of the GPS class, you always pointers on function for the interface. And you can find the definition of those, those functions here. So it was just, when you navigate in this code, when you see that you call some inits, you just have to check the structures. If you search the structures in all projects, you will see normal, normally one instantiation here with the definition of the real function. 
For the device class structures, so it needs a, it's the same, I mean. For the device, you've got all the device functions that are defined here. So when sometime in the code you can see some data in, you can just check the name of the structures. So here is a USB D class type def, and you will find exactly what is the different function for this. The device structure, so it was the top one, who I will say concentrate all the information on all the pointer on the other structures. So you've got the configuration, the different on points, some state of 1.0. Um, the state of 1.0 is, is used during the stage, uh, the setup transaction. You have to remember what's happened on the 1.0 to decide if you have to receive or to send data later. And then we can find those pointer, the pointer on the class, which is defined in the USBD CDC, so really the, the core of the class. Then you've got the class data who will handle the, all the dynamically allocated uh, buffer for this class. Then we've got the user data, where there is the interfaces, and finally the lower drivers that are pointing by the P data. So, I'm sure you will forget all those things <laughs> as soon as I switch off or change the slide, but you can keep them, come back to them when you are lost in your navigation in the code. Okay, for the host part, it will be handled tomorrow by uh, Lubos, I think. We just focus here on the device one. Do you have any question on this part? Or have I killed you? It's okay. So, as I say, it's more clue or way of thinking. Now you should have, I would say, in mind just how the information is split in the file. Remember how it's, let's forget it, it's one hour, it's not possible. Just remember everything coming from interrupt from the lower levels. So, it's always triggered by interrupt at the lower level. You've got this story of, okay, I've got a RX54 and many TX, TX54 and I will just push or get data from this at the good risk. All the setup will be in the core. They will handle the core. We just say, okay, this information or this setup is for device descriptors. It's for the class or things like that. Okay? Now you should have ID of where are the functionality. 